Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel, and in the video today we're looking at why they say mush to make sled dogs go. If we relied on Yukon Cornelius from the 1964 Christmas classic Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer to teach us about dog sledding, we might be slightly misled. In multiple instances throughout the movie, Cornelius cracks the whip and hollers, MUSH! MUSH! to his dog sled team. But do mushers actually say this? You might be surprised, given they are literally called mushers that no, not really. So why are they called mushers, and where did the idea that they yelled mush to their dogs to get them to run come from? Dogs have been used to pull sleds in certain regions of North America for at least a thousand years, and even further back in regions such as modern-day Siberia, where it's thought they were using dogs for this purpose as much as three millennia ago. But we have to fast forward significantly through history to get to the first mush. The genesis of this term dates back to the 16th century, when Jacques Cartier claimed the Gaspe Peninsula in present-day eastern Quebec for France. Claiming is one thing, actually ruling is another, given that there were already many humans living there. Unsurprisingly, clashes between the French and various native groups became somewhat commonplace in the region. But while they occasionally battled, they also picked up a few things from one another. Most relevant to the topic at hand, the French soon adopted the practice of using dogs to pull sleds in the region, and by the 18th century, this became the common means of transportation in the winter in the northernmost areas of New France. In 1749, one Peter Calm, who was traveling through Quebec, noted of this, In winter, it is customary in Canada for travelers to put dogs before little sledges made on purpose to hold their clothes clothes, provisions, etc. Poor people commonly employ them on their winter journeys and go on foot themselves. Almost all the wood which the poorer people in the country fetch out of the woods in winter is carried by dogs, which have therefore got the name of horses of the poor people. They commonly place a pair of dogs before each load of wood. I have likewise seen some neat little sledges for ladies to ride in in winter. They are drawn by a pair of dogs and go faster on a good road than one would think. A middle-sized dog is sufficient to draw a single person when the roads are good. With the signing of the Treaty of Paris in 1763 at the conclusion of the Seven Years' War, France ceded most of its territories in North America to Britain. What does this have to do with dog sleds and mushing? The French dog sled drivers would commonly use marsh walk as the command to get the dogs to start moving. When the British took over, this is thought to have eventually given rise to the English dog sledding command mush. With the first known instance of the term referencing dog sledding popping up in 1862. Mush as a kind of porridge predates the dog sledding definition by a couple of hundred years. The English dog sledding mush in turn led to the creation of the term musher as the name given for the dog sled driver that is still in use today. However, mush itself is almost never used anymore as many mushers consider it too soft of a command to be used as a distinctive command, particularly when driving the dogs through windy, blizzard-like conditions. Instead, many prefer commands such as hike or OK, often with let's go and all right tacked on to get the dogs moving. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below this video. And if you did enjoy it, why not subscribe to our channel? We put out brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, over there on the right are a couple of other videos you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.